Good morning, Living Waters. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Happy 4th of July, whether you're worshiping here with us in person or worshiping at home. We're glad that you are with us this morning. We've got a couple of announcements going on. The first of which is we are marching in the 4th of July parade today in Crystal Lake. The parade starts at 1. We hope to see you there. If you want to join us, please just uh, join us in the uh, lining up process before 1. Because 1, they made it clear, it starts sharp at 1. So if you want to get back there in time, maybe sometime between noon and 1 would be great. Frank Sweeney has an announcement he would like to make. If you want to come forward, Frank? Lydia, can we borrow your mic from Frank, please? And while Frank's coming up, I will continue to announce that we are looking for a worship chair. If you do feel called to this position to serve the church and helping organize volunteers, you'll see this week, actually, this service, we have a number of volunteers. In, in this part of the service. We have our ushers back there. We had our candle lighter. Thank you, you're very good. We had our, uh, we have a reader, and Lee's work on the text, so. All right, Frank, it's yours. Good morning. Thank Good morning. you, Pastor Zach, for allowing me to speak today. My name is Frank Sweeney. The Knights of Columbus, Northern Illinois, for the month of consuls are hosting a fundraiser for St. Children's Cancer Research Hospital, which was founded by Danny Thomas. One in five children will die from cancer. St. Jude's will not rest until no child dies. There is no charge to the family for food or lodging, but they can concentrate on their loved one. The fundraiser will be a bike which will be held at Peterson Park in McHenry on Sunday, August 8th. I will have the uh, arrows out there to come down Route 31. There will be arrows showing the way. The event sign up will be from 12 to 1 with the kickoff at 1 o'clock. The ride will be on the bike trail and will be a total of 6 miles. You can ride a shorter distance if necessary. Young children will be riding in the park itself. <coughs> you really don't want them on the trail alone. There will be a picnic afterwards with hot dogs, hamburgers, Chips and a drink. It will be in its open. Any interested parties can see me outside the church with information. I will also accept any and all donations. Thank you, and may God bless you all. And those that are listening at home, uh, I will leave the I will leave forms here. With you can pick them up in the church office. Yes, we have the paperwork. And thank you, Frank. Uh, having lived in Memphis, Tennessee, I see the work that St. Jude's does, and it is truly life-changing. So thank you in advance for your support. Uh, thank you, Frank, and the Knights of Columbus for organizing this. All right. Summer connections are going strong. I've met with, or I don't remember the exact now, 30-something, but by the end of not this week, but the following week, I'll be at 50, so we're flying. That being said, if you have uh, time, especially in late July or early August, let me know uh, if we have not met yet. So I'd love to meet with you and meet with every member of the congregation this summer. Uh, and it's been really wonderful. I have to say, the uh, I already knew this to be true, but uh, we got the best people. And, uh, you know, it, it's been really wonderful to, to get to know people finally with this crazy year. And... Um, I didn't, this is this is not planned, but um, <laughs> I have to say thank you to this congregation. Just getting through this really hard year with the, the car and the, I don't forget about that now, but the car and the, and the pandemic and just everything we've been through. Uh, we, we've done this together. We continue to adapt and, and work together. So thank you for your patience, your, your commitment to Christ and just everything we're doing together. Thank you. All right, enough of that. All right. Um, speaking of being together, that worked out well, our Tuesdays together begin this Tuesday, every Tuesday from 6 to 8 during the month of July. Uh, we are gathering outside. There will be food. Uh, it's time just to, to hang out, to, again, to just see each other again. No scheduling, you know, no, I mean, 6 to 8, but it's very loose. Come and go as you please. No signing up ahead of time. No masks because it's outside unless you want to. Uh, it's, it's very relaxed. People, the 
feedback we've gotten is people want the less structured, relaxing event, and that's what we're doing. So, six to eight, this Tuesday is pizza. Uh, which who doesn't like pizza? Come on! Um, but yeah, and uh, we're not gonna, you know, if we end up, we need to order more pizza, what a great problem to have, we'll do that, but uh, just come on out and have pizza and hang out and uh, get to know people too. I mean, we have some people that are checking us out and such too. We, Good to get to know them as well. So thank you for everyone. Like I said, it's every Tuesday from six to eight. The food changes every week. So this week is pizza week. Woo! All right. I am not seeing any other announcements. Okay. Super. Again, great today. Looking forward to that. All right. Well then, with that. Please stand as you are able, as we begin worship together with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin together. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there's enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved of people of God and Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in our baptism you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles, that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance in life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
font's too small. I can't. Oh. Please stand for the reading of the gospel as you were able. The gospel of our Lord according to Mark, the sixth chapter. This is from Mark 6, uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. Following along at home, on your phone, in a book, a Bible. That would be awesome. If you so or you can just listen. Mark 6, 1-13 Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? They took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. He could do no need of power there, except he laid hands on a few sick people and cured them. Jesus was amazed by their unbelief. Then he went out among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two. He gave them authority over unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals, not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay until you leave that place. Any place without welcoming you, they refuse to hear you. As you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil. Many were sick and cured. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Good 
morning, we're going to start our time together with these texts with a good sermon. So good morning. Welcome. Welcome those at home. All right. In the bag today. <laughs> what is this? A piece of paper. Very good. All right. So sometimes we can make things with paper. You know, maybe things are a little slow at the office one day. Whatever happens. You know, um, I've been known to take a piece of paper, maybe a little scrap of paper. Okay. We're going to make a nice little like, paper so anyone, you made your paper airplane before, anybody? You have? Oh, very good. Okay. I'm not very good at this, but that's okay. It'll fly. I have confidence. Okay. It's a nice fat. All right. How far do you think this is going to go? Super far? I think so, too. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should have put a point on it. That's okay. All right. So sometimes... Uh, things don't go as we planned, right? I thought that was going to be going all the way to the back, uh, but gravity hit other planets, okay? Uh, sometimes we're sent out, we don't always do our best. Uh, we're not perfect, right? Sometimes we make mistakes, and that's okay. With God, God can do a lot with us, even if we're not perfect. In fact, I'm going to make another flying device for us this morning, okay? This is not a good plane, right? It's very imperfect. It doesn't even have wings, but yet, look how far it went! Yeah? With God, see, with God, even though we're not perfect, maybe we don't look the part that we think needs to be done, you know, God can make us go further. When God sends us out to make a difference in the world, we can do more than we can even imagine. That paper ball looked a lot more imperfect than that airplane, and yet it went a lot further. With God, all things are possible. We pray with you this morning, and I invite you to repeat after. Dear God, Dear God, we thank you, we thank you for, your Son, Jesus Christ, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who sends us out, sends us out to, serve the world. to serve the world. Thank you, thank you. for making our weakness strong. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a good week, everyone. We are Christians. We cannot be afraid to speak the truth. We're Christians. We cannot be afraid to speak the truth. We are Christians. We cannot be afraid to speak the truth. No matter the consequence. The Christian witness is founded on gospel truth, often in the face of persecution, resistance, and even martyrdom. I share this week on my personal Facebook page the newest data trends that show us what unchurched people find most off-putting about the church, a combination of a perceived inauthenticity and a reluctance by the church to engage in community issues that matter to that community. People who aren't religious do not think that churches are telling the truth. So here it again, we are Christians, we cannot be afraid to speak the truth. Our mission is founded on this authentic courage. And this isn't some novel teaching this morning. The need for Christians to speak truth is all over Scripture. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. God promises us through faith. We will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. You hear that every Reformation Sunday every year. These are just some of the 200 plus passages in the Old and New Testament that call on the people of God to speak the truth, to live in the truth, to testify to the truth. There's a body of Christ together to embody the truth in all that we do. God the Father speaks the truth to the prophets. 
God the Son lived out the truth. And was ultimately killed because of truth. Thankfully, the gospel shows us the power of resurrection that resides in those who help tell the truth. God the Holy Spirit is first and foremost described by Jesus as the one who will guide us into all truth. Our God cannot be separated from the truth. In fact, our God works to reveal the truth always. Therefore, as Christians, we cannot be afraid to tell the truth. As we heard Chris read from 2 Corinthians, Paul wrote that even if we don't feel strong enough, even if we don't think we're smart enough, or well-spoken enough, Whatever it is, it's that thorn in our side. Here, God preached to us this morning. My grace is sufficient for you. Her power is made perfect in weakness. We firmly believe, despite our weaknesses, God preaches the gospel when we speak the truth. Trust me, someone who preaches every week, I know this to be true. I'm not special. God is. We cannot be afraid to speak the truth. And I think deep down we know this to be afraid to be true. But when it comes to putting it in practice, when there's resistance, speaking the truth can be really hard. Especially if people don't want to hear that truth. Especially with people who know us, including our weaknesses. We're social beings. We want to be liked. We want to be respected. Often the truth is challenging. It won't always be received well. The response I began returns to God's word, urging you not to be afraid, but trusting that God's grace is sufficient. Remember, in the end, God will win. The truth will have its day. God knows telling the truth is hard sometimes. God runs into trouble all the time in Scripture when God speaks the truth. Look at this gospel passage today. Jesus is speaking the truth in his hometown, and they reject him. People we grew up with. In fact, in other gospel accounts, they try to throw him off a cliff. And later, when Jesus sends out the disciples in this passage, Jesus openly tells them there will be people who don't want to hear what he has to say. And that shouldn't let them discourage them in sharing God's mission of true grace and love. When I read that second half of the passage today from the Gospel of Mark, I hear Jesus telling the disciples, Christians, we cannot be afraid to tell the truth. All right. We hear you, God. Hey, today's Fourth of July. Happy Fourth of July. Happy Independence Day, everyone. So how do we as Christians speak the truth on this national holiday. Don't worry, Scripture's plenty of passages telling us how we should interact with our governments and citizenship. citizenship. We are encouraged and patriotic as long as Jesus Christ remains Lord of our lives. So let's start with positive truths. Living in this country, we experience freedoms and opportunities the rest of the world can only dream. Just being able to gather here in person, to have good enough internet to gather online, most of the world can't do that. It's a privilege that we share. I think we were reminded of this during the pandemic when we couldn't gather in person for a year, but it's a truth that bears repeating. Sadly, our United States 
is still so unique to the world when it comes to religious liberty. It's a foundational freedom that we should celebrate on this day. Thanks be to God we can open worship so open and free. Today we also give thanks to those who fought and died laid down their lives for our nation. We would not be who we are today as a country without their and their family sacrifices. As Abraham Lincoln more beautifully spoke in his Gettysburg Address so many years ago, his words echoed through the ages as truth. We highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom. In the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. The world's greatest democratic experiment that was begun on July 4, 1776, is an ideal that we're still striving towards. It's a vision of a new nation where we have the privilege to be a part of it, to get a say in it as the people. This is a rare thing. Even still, many of our ancestors never lived with this right of representation. It is a precious gift that we should celebrate today. Today we celebrate the progress we have made to becoming a more perfect nation. We rejoice in a dream founded in truth. As our Declaration of Independence states, with a little edit, we hold these truths, here we notice it's a capital T, truth. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all are created equal. They're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yes, as Christians, Jesus Christ is our sole Lord and sovereign. But we can also be patriots and love our country, love the ideals that we strive towards together. Just because you love something doesn't mean you don't want better for it. For Christians, we cannot be afraid to speak the truth. The whole truth. The United States of America, though we love it and we celebrate our nation today, has to recognize it's not perfect. The United States is not the kingdom of God. And so as truth-telling Christians, we use this day not only to celebrate and to remember and to reflect, but also to dedicate ourselves to the betterment of our country but also rededicate ourselves to be finally worthy of the dream of that capital T truth that all are equal. To work together as people of faith to make this nation better for all people is not unpatriotic. Rather, it is a commitment to our founding truths, both as Americans and as Christians. To treat the United States, or any nation for that matter, as perfect is idolatry. We do not worship a blameless America. Our country is part of the broken world we hear about in Scripture. But it's not beyond hope. Through the loving sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, we recognize, yes, our nation is not perfect. We can do better. But through the cross of Christ, we have faith that there's always potential for new abundant life. For us and for our community, for our country, that we celebrate this day and for the entire world. That's the truth. This is why we've committed to our anti-racism work here at Living Waters, because we're Christians. We cannot be afraid to tell the truth. Putting the truth about the sin of racism that has plagued the soul of this nation even before that day of July 4, 1776. I know it's uncomfortable. 
especially on a holiday with the parade that we're marching in a few hours, but it is the truth. Do you want to throw a visual aid here? Because instead of preaching yet again about the truths of racism in this country, you've heard me say this enough times now, well, maybe not enough, but a lot, uh, I'm going to show you something this morning. Kind of God's always against forms of supremacy, uh, the dangers of racism, etc. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Please can now put on the screen an image that was shared with me this week by someone who isn't even in our congregation but had heard of our anti-racism work and wanted to get my opinion on this. And I did fact check this, by the way, because we tell the truth. We have to make sure it's not photoshopped. We are Christians after all. This is a stained glass window from a Lutheran church in the Chicago suburbs. My correspondence to them was not answered, unfortunately. After all, this is, okay, so this is real. This is real. I thought I checked this. I promise you. Okay, so let's start at the top. What happens when we don't tell the truth as Christians? You see up top, Lee, can you see them? Maybe the mouse? Oh, perfect. Mouse up to Jesus, please. Yes, this blonde, uh, blue-eyed gentleman with the American colors, that is Jesus. I don't know. Blonde, blue-eyed, I mean, it's like me. He's going to get sunburned in the Middle East where he lived. Right? But first, that's not true. Jesus was not white. Second, Every person in the stained glass window is white. Especially flying under the American flag, uh, it's not an accurate, truthful representation of our country. A melting pot from all nations, right? It also goes against this idea of the Machu Day, if y'all people are creating God's image. We also, we'll get to the bottom in a second, please stay up here, please. Uh, Jesus is doing the sign of blessing with his right hand. We're blessing the American flag. Again, yes, we ask God to bless America. But what version of America are we specifically is white Jesus blessing in the stained glass window that hangs in the sanctuary in a Lutheran church? All right, scroll bottom, please, lady. There, oh, little docks in like that. And then at the bottom, you are a chosen race. There it is. I said, I knew that was going to happen. We're seeing that for last. Quoting 1 Peter 2 9, well, half of 1 Peter 2 9. Of course, we know the translation is better as a chosen people, uh, but, you know, NIV, which is an older translation, translates it as such. However, some still choose to translate this way. In fact, it's the most used verse by white nationalist groups. Dangerous ideology is sanctified as truth. When we won't say otherwise. This window and the eye of theology that goes with it is dangerous. It leads to oppression, it leads to violence, it leads to death. Thank you. This picture says a thousand words. When we as Christians are afraid or uncomfortable or inconvenienced to tell the truth, Dangerous, heretical lies are allowed to endure. Lies that are contrary to the teachings of Christ. Lies that threaten our nation's aspirational dream of all people created equal. And life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all people. Simply put, white supremacy, racism, are lies that are unchristian and unpatriotic. Therefore, the church we must speak the truth. For our country, most importantly, our gospel witness is at stake. But there is hope. It's not all bad. With God guiding, the church progress is being made. When I was a seminary intern in 2015, and the Emanuel 9 shooting happened in South Carolina, they were gunned down by an ELC Lutheran, by the way, I was told not to preach about it. I did anyway, and I received multiple death threats. A year later, while finishing candidacy, some of the 
white male leaders of the candidacy team pulled me aside. He warned me about going into the controversial topics too much in the ELCA because, quote, people don't want that on Sunday morning. I don't believe that. I still don't believe that. I think our people want, and I even argue with people outside the church, they want an authentic faith life. Empowered by our ministry, including Sunday morning. We have good, intelligent, gifted, passionate people in our congregation. I believe we're up to the challenge of God's mission. And those shared baptismal promises we heard just last week. Most of all, at the end of the day, we are Christians. We cannot be afraid to speak the truth. And look, we Progress is happening. We spoke truth in our online service of commemoration for the Emmanuel 9 this past month. A service that was shared with local houses of faith in our county and with many congregations across the ELCA, or our Senate, excuse me, in our Senate, Northern Illinois Senate. Hundreds of people worshiped with us. Together with God and with each other, progress is happening. One truth telling at a time. God teaches us the truth will have its day. God promises us repeatedly in Scripture about the power of truth. All our hard work of truth telling together will not be in vain. Therefore, today, let us celebrate this nation for all the good it does. It does provide so much. For the progress we have made in pursuing the ideals that our founding Declaration of Independence so beautifully spoke. Let's remember with reverence all those who have sacrificed so we can enjoy this day and the treasured freedoms we have. Let us also rededicate. Let's rededicate ourselves in Christ to the ministry of grace, love, and truth and commit ourselves to the dream of what America can still yet become. On this 4th of July, we celebrate one nation under God, which includes telling the whole truth of who we are as the United States, but even more importantly, who we are as children of God. For we are Christians. We cannot be afraid to speak the truth.
Please join me. Please join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's come before the triune God in prayer together. God of all, through the waters of baptism, you claim people of all races, ethnicities, and languages as your beloved children. Sustain the baptized and increase their faith. That your gospel may be proclaimed throughout the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of the heavens, your creating spirit animates the universe. We give thanks for the moon and the stars, for the planets and the Milky Way galaxy, for all the mysteries of the cosmos that remain unknown to us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of freedom, you have liberated us from sin and death, and rescue us from all forms of spiritual, social, and political oppression. Defend us from tyrants in our midst, and deliver us from all forms of slavery or corruption. Direct our freedoms for works of liberation and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, you became vulnerable in the person of Jesus Christ in solidarity with the disempowered. Strengthen those who feel faint. Give courage to those who fear. And bring wholeness to those in need. In the silence of our hearts out loud, or at home, in the common section, today we especially pray for. Lord, in your mercy, God of holiness, you send us out into the world to proclaim your love. We pray for our outreach ministries. Equip us as we leave this place to witness and serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks that in every time and place you call forth prophets who move us towards freedom. Thank you for all those who work for human rights, community organizers, and all who strive for liberty for all. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. In giving thanks for the gifts we've received that empower our ministry together and all that God has blessed us with, we lift up this prayer of offering. Jesus, bread of life, you've set this table with your very self. You called us in the feasts of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. This time we will be celebrating communion. If you want to get your communion kits ready if you're in person or if you're at home, your helmet's ready, your bread, wine, or juice. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming glory as we pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Save us Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come, all are welcome. And at this time, please take communion, the body of Christ given for you, for the bread, and for the wine or juice, the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, journeys with us, be upon you both now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 
Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thank you, Thank you God. God. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We are at, oh, that box uh, We are marching, like I said, in the parade at 1. We ask if you're in the back, please filter out first. In the back, go first to prevent bottlenecking. And have a wonderful week. Have a great holiday. God bless you all. Have a good week, everyone. Have a wonderful